The Cube at Hadoop Summit 2014 is brought to you by anchor sponsor Hortonworks. We do Hadoop. And headline sponsor, WAN Disco. We make Hadoop invincible. Welcome back to theCUBE. We're here live at the Hadoop Summit in San Jose. My name's Jeff Kelly, I'm with Wikibon. Uh, I'm, my next guest, uh, two partners here in the, in the Hadoop ecosystem, uh, and you'll see that uh, a theme at this show, a lot of partnerships happening. Uh, we've got John Santaferrero, Vice President of Marketing for Actian Analytics Platform at Actian, and of course, CUBE alum Jim Walker, Director of Product Marketing at Hortonworks. Welcome guys. Glad to be here. Hey Jeff. We were just talking a little bit before, the, before we went on. This is uh, a fun, but hectic, and uh, a little bit tiring uh, few days here at this show. There's a lot happening, huh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a marathon for sure. Indeed, so. I, I think it's a sprint, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> go with that. So, so Jim, I, w I wanted to start with you, talk a little bit about uh, kind of one of the things that's top of mind here at the show for, for pretty much everybody, and that's Yarn. Um, you know, it was announced uh, last fall. Yeah. Um, so it's been out in the market for a little while now. Uh, really, tell the people out there that aren't familiar with Yarn why it's so important to the Hadoop ecosystem. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been such a, a theme of this show. I mean, it's uh, definitely all over the place. I would say it's definitely, Yarn heavy. Uh, if you aren't slapped around with yarn, I guess. In the Sean, uh, the Sean Connolly keynote had a great graphic on that one, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yarn really is this. It's kind of the inception of I think of Hadoop too, and this is a whole new generation of really kind of the way we think about linear scale storage and compute. Um, I mean, the the main value of Hadoop is to provide this 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 great system, data platform, to do all these great things. The problem was it's it, with traditional hoop. It was traditional Hadoop, excuse me, it was uh, largely a batch system. Uh, typically, you know, a single siloed cluster with a single data set. And so with Yarn, really, it's the inception of really expanding Hadoop now into more of a, you know, multi-purpose, multi-use platform where you're storing, you know, many different sets of data and then setting up multiple applications and multiple different engines that are all accessing the data in different ways, all on that single set of data, uh, be, it, be it batch, which traditionally, of course, Hadoop's fantastic at, right? But the interactive and real-time use cases and running all of those at the same time. It, um, it's not just opening up to new applications. We're seeing people start to see you know, end-to-end kind of Lambda architectures of the way that they actually deal with data. And so I think it's just a, it was a function of time before this mm -hmm. happened. And I think early on the, the Hadoop team at Yahoo saw this. A lot of those guys are, are now with Hortonworks, of course. And uh, you know they they saw the limitations of traditional Hadoop and mm -hmm. you know Yarn started back in I guess 2009 or so and it is the delivery of that and so our customers are looking at it as kind of this this vehicle to a wholly different way of looking at data I think its introduction in October it literally has completely changed this marketplace. We'll talk a little bit more about that. What are you hearing from customers? Um, and where are they on their, uh, you know, in terms of uh, using, actually uh, implementing these new pr uh, data processing frameworks on top of Yarn? Yeah. Are we, I mean, it's still very early, but uh, what are you actually seeing out in the field? Yeah, so, I mean, we're seeing lots of stuff. And so, lots of interest in stream processing and stream analytics uh, using things like Storm. So Apache Storm on Hadoop. Um, and people are extremely interested in, in that use case. So looking at these you know, massive sets of data that are streaming in from say machines and sensors and these sort of things, and they want to pick off uh, items, they want to pick off events, they want to do real-time analytics across data that's floating into an overall system, right? And so um, that, that workload in particular is definitely, we've seen a huge increase. I, you know, the, I think the other one is, and very straightforward, is you know, HBase is known as fairly uh, a, a resource hog, I would say, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so when you're running HBase in a cluster, it kind of take o took over the whole cluster. If you have a more granular uh, resource management, which, alar which Yarn allows you to do, is you can now control, uh, you know, how much of a cluster is being used for what workload, still having a single data set. And so you're starting to see now, you know, stream processing, uh, you know, HBase with low latency, no SQL, and then Ultimately, you know, I think this this whole interactive query via SQL, which is you know the lingua franca of, of data, right. yeah, right. so always always important. Well, yeah, we're hearing a lot about SQL on Hadoop, um, you know, and that is really one of one of the most popular ways that people are looking to to take advantage of Yarn. Um, as you said, you know, there's there's how many SQL developers out there that understand the language. That's how they access 
access data. So yeah. it, it makes sense to bring that to the Hadoop environment. Um, so John, talk a little bit about Actian's approach to this because you know we've said there are there are several SQL on Hadoop options out there. Actian has just kind of announced their uh, entry to this market. Tell us why Actian did that. Why we need another SQL on Hadoop, and really where's the value, of, uh, the really value add that you bring to the table? Yeah, absolutely. So the this whole uh, idea of yarn, by the way, is that yarn changes everything. <laughs> and I agree with that. That's what uh, Rob Bearden said in the keynote and absolutely agree. And we've been running stuff on the HDFS clusters before yarn was even available because we believed that, we knew it was coming. And so our, while everybody else is trying to do what they're calling SQL on Hadoop, we're actually doing SQL in Hadoop, inside of Hadoop. And there's a lot of advantages to that. The one, ad one advantage is performance. We're, coming out of the gates, for example, up to 30 times faster than Impala. Um, we're, we're able to offer, because we're inside of Hadoop, a single management system for all the clusters um, where, you're, where everything is happening via Hadoop and Yarn management. So you don't have to create a, a separate cluster and separate management system. We use all the replication capabilities of, of HDFS as a file system. And so it eliminates a lot of complexity and then Ultimately, our approach is that we, we've taken the, the industry's fastest, most hardened, most mature vector processing engine and put it inside of Hadoop. So everybody, Jeff, is really trying to do vector processing. That, it, there's agreement across the board, the Stinger Initiative, um, Impala, um, they're all working at doing vector processing in, on or inside of Hadoop. Well, guess what? When Peter Bonch did that research, on vector processing back in the early 2000s and built out a vector-wise database, we bought that technology. Um, so it's been in development since 2004. It went into production in 2010. It's been hardened. It has ACID compliance. It's got all of the failover capabilities, um, full SQL support, including a bunch of analytic functions, and all of this now running natively inside of Hadoop. So we've essentially turned Hadoop into a fully functional, high performance analytic database. A, a massively parallel, an MPP analytic database, all running inside of Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So you take your existing BI tools, your reports, your operational dashboards, um, your operational BI, you point it at Hadoop now, and it runs like any database you've ever interacted with mm -hmm. in the past. So this is, a, this is a huge step forward, we think because uh, we're using this hardened technology created by the father of vector processing that we're actually entering the market about four to five years in advance of the rest of the providers. Yeah, we, we had Peter on, we talked a little bit about some of the technical um, symbiosis, if you will, between uh, the Actian database and Hadoop, um, scale out nature on commodity uh, machines, and it actually is a, is, a, is a quite natural fit, as opposed to some, some of the other types of databases out there that are maybe built on different, different approaches that don't necessarily uh, match up quite so seamlessly with uh, the, the scale out approach to Hadoop. Um, so let's translate all that, though, to, to, to solid business value. What is this going to enable um, your customers to do that maybe they couldn't do before? Uh, or is it, is it simply going to make things move faster? Or is it going to give them new capabilities? Or a little bit of both? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's actually the acceleration of time to value for analytics and for big data investment. So it was interesting in the keynote here at the Hadoop Summit, Merv gave a figure. He said that 70% of the existing big data projects are not yet in production. Um, there's also about 60% of those projects that don't even have a business case. And the reason is, every, if you think about it, every business unit has a conduit to the data and the analytics, and that conduit is a business analyst. And 90-something percent of those business analysts use a SQL tool or write their own SQL to be able to access the data and run these analytics they're providing to the business. And up until now, they've been given very limited access to data in, in Hadoop. Uh, the, the SQL support is, the door's been opened slightly, we're, we're flinging the doors open wide. And so the most important thing is that we are, we're literally opening the door to millions of business savvy SQL users to be able to access this data that sits in Hadoop, uh, to be able to provide the business case, to be able to pick the models that are going to work the best, mm -hmm. and to be able to translate those into operational BI and embed those analytics in business process. So what we're doing is we're actually speeding the process so that people can now move these Hadoop projects out of the laboratory, into production, begin creating value, 
and ultimately transform the way companies use data and analytics. Well, so let me push on that a little bit. So you're going to have, a, there's going to be somewhat of a change management uh, issue taking place here. You've got to, um, you know, the way companies do things has got to change uh, from their traditional systems to adopting Hadoop and then adopting something like SQL in Hadoop. Um, so I'd like to get both your perspectives. What are you doing in terms of, or what are you coming up against when you're in, in customer situations in terms of making some of those mindset changes about how you look at data management? Um, and how are you kind of pushing those conversations forward? Into my yeah, I mean I, I mean, I think what John just said, I mean, is, is attributed to that. It's, um, you know, mainstream of adoption depends on skills. Yep. 60%, I would say, maybe 70% of a buy process for anybody in technology is, do I have the skills to actually implement something? And so, you know, when we're sitting there and I'm going forth, I'm saying, hey, Hadoop, Hadoop, uh, you got to learn MapReduce. That, that's, a, that's a tough language, that's a tough sell, right? And so, what we're seeing is really this, this, this mainstream Hadoop emerging. And mainstream Hadoop, it has to have all those tools. You know, it's a, you know Rob Bearden was on the keynote yesterday talking about, you know, the enterprise has set a high bar for what enterprise means. Um, mm -hmm. We know what that is, right? We've been through this for 20 years, right? Or 30 or whatever it's been, right? And so, you know, I think, I don't think we can hide from any of that stuff. And so, you know, for me, it's, you know, you look at security, you look at governance, you look at operations, and you look at these interfaces. You know, what's that development framework that is going to enable and, and empower companies like Actian to basically directly integrate with Yarn? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a multiplier effect for Hadoop. I mean, look, Hortonworks, you know, I mean, Jeff, you've been talking to us for a long time, you've had everybody on here. You know, we're, we're a platform. Mm -hmm. I don't want to compete up the stack. I don't think our place is above that stack, right? And so, I want to be linear scale, compute and storage, and provide all the right framework mm -hmm. and all the right APIs so that, you know, great mm -hmm. partners like Actian can build and use Hadoop and we can go to market together and do all these different things. So, but, you know, that, that's, I think, what we're seeing. So, John. Yeah, I think the, the beauty of our partnership is that, that when you combine all of the modern data platform that you get with Hortonworks and the, the Actian analytics platform, um, we're really looking at, at bringing together that entire end-to-end -end analytics process. So uh, there is the SQL on Hadoop, but, but remember in, in, in our platform, we also have a data science workbench where mm -hmm. uh, you know, our, our business analysts can choose from 1,500 operators to do all of their data blending and enrichment, uh, data science, to be able to do analytics, machine learning, uh, all of the building and testing of models, and all of that runs natively inside of Hadoop via Yarn as well. Mm. And so just no coding required, right? Drag and drop interface. So we're, we're essentially removing all barriers for business access to this data that, that sits in Hadoop, and we're, we're opening it up now to the entire spectrum of users of big data analytics. So the, the data scientist you know, does all of this discovery kind of work and they, they figure out you know, what, are the, what are the candidate models that, that, that we can be creating, what are all the possibilities, and then the data miner brings in these data mining algorithms and, and tests those models mm -hmm. and figures out you know, which are the two or three contender models and then they, they pass it on to the business analyst and the business analyst will well, knows the, understands the business, right? They live in it and they'll figure out which one am I going to put into production. And then all of that gets passed on to the casual user who takes that, puts it into the business and operationalizes it. And so uh, between us, we've got a platform that right. brings that entire mm -hmm. process together in one single place. It's incredibly powerful for companies wanting to move forward with Hadoop. Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, we've done some work, uh, some survey work, and one of the things we find, and this is not surprising, I mean, it kind of validated what we thought, but one of the biggest challenges going from that um, you know, scaling and productionizing your, your, your insights and your models that you develop in Hadoop or whatever platform, and then actually extending that to larger data sets and, and building some kind of data product that someone can consume and on a regular basis is a real challenge. And so, um, anything you can do to break down some of those barriers uh, is you know, going to be hugely valuable uh, to customers. So it sounds like that's one of the advantages of kind of having a, a, a complete end-to-end -end platform approach. Yeah, ab absolutely. And I think that, and it's so, and there's cooperation as well. You know, I think one of the one of the great things about Hortonworks, and Jim, I'll let you talk more about this, but is, you know, having Hive where you can address you can address petabytes of data. You can run a query through Hive and you can ask a question of all of the petabytes of, petabytes of data that sit in Hadoop and you'll get a response back and then you have you know, a data science 
workbench right. or a SQL mm -hmm. interface for the business users that want to do higher performant kinds of analytics. It's supporting all of those workloads. That's the combination of what Hortonworks and Actian together. You're exactly right, John. And, and this is exactly how this market is going to, people ask me, you know, where's this thing going? Where are we going to end up? This is exactly where it ends up and it's, you know, Look at, yeah, Hive can do, vector, we have vectorized query on Hive. We have, we've had long conversations about this, John, right? And so, you know, how are we getting, you know, uh, you know in, interactive query at scale across, you know, broad range of semantics is what, you know, semantics we want to do in, in Hive. So, what am I going to use Hive for versus Actian, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the question. It's like, well, I'm not going to build the, the stuff up the stack, right? I mean, I'm still looking at a SQL interface. That, that's, that's where we stop, right? Mm -hmm. we, we build this great SQL interface called Hive. Uh, all of the, the intellectual property that Actium brings to the table for data science and all the, you know, how do we do that? that that's, not, that's not our job as a well, vendor. Right, I mean, you know, that's, that's why we partner with people to do these things, and it's been from day one, that is absolutely where we, you know, where we're held on making sure that that's where we fit, and that's why partnerships with us work extremely well. I don't want to, I don't want to obviate, I don't want to block out the sun, I, I, want, to, I want to work well with everybody, because the data center is the data center. Yeah. And, and we're all going to live. Well, we've you know we've talked a lot on the cube about Hortonworks has really you know stuck with their strategy from from day one. There's been no wavering on that, and and it's critical uh, you know for your for, for for Hortonworks long term strategy to remain open and to to really I mean the partnerships are critical to to your long term success yeah. and enabling the ecosystem. And I think that's why there's 88 companies out here. And yeah, I think the, it's, it's part of it, Jeff. I mean you know you know my friend Mitch Ferguson, he's our VP of Business Development at Hortonworks. Um, you know, day one at Hortonworks, we had 24 engineers. 24 engineers came out of Yahoo. Um, there were three other employees on day one. Rob Bearden, our CEO, uh, VP of finance, he got, I guess you got to have a finance guy, right? And uh, our BD guy. Mm -hmm. And so really, it's it, literally, figure, not just figurative, literally from day one, it was a main focus of us to actually mm -hmm. you know, it, light up the ecosystem. And so I think that's, yeah, that's mm -hmm. why we haven't faltered. We're, you know, we, we know that that's important and we're, I think we all march to that same beat internally at Hortonworks for sure, and I think our partners uh, witness it. I mean, the way that we interact with them. It's uh, mm -hmm. time and time again, I hear, great company to work with, we were able to get X, Y, and Z done. I mean, that's, it's, mm -hmm. it's critical for well, us. Well, let's, you know, let's size up the market a little bit. Uh, when you're talking about you know, competitor approaches, so you've got Cloudera taking the approach where they're both trying to build out the Hadoop data platform layer and some of the things that Acting is trying to do, where you're taking more of a partner strategy. What are you know to put on your 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 objective hat, and and what are the pros and cons of that approach versus your approach? Do you think? I, look, everybody has a business strategy, Jeff. I'm I'm going to stick with the Hortonworks strategy. I believe in it. Um, you know, I, I bleed Hortonworks green. Obviously, you've known me for a while, um, but it's not just that. It's just I believe that the an open community mm -hmm. uh, needs a very kind of uh, an open approach to, to partnerships, and that's. I'm not going to comment on my, my competition and their strategy. I, I, I like what try. they do. I got to try, Jim. <laughs> you, 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 you bait me all day long. I, I mean, I mean I'll, let, I'll let John talk about it, but you know, look, at I, I really like having a very strong competitor. I, 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 yeah. To me, you know, Doug and I, Doug in a room were on stage earlier today. I saw them last week at a panel as well. I don't think we would be, be where we are today as a market without this competition that's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, to me, it's absolutely paramount for any market to move fast, to have great competition in it, because we have moved very quickly, right? Yeah. And so, and I think that's technically, business-wise, I mean, look, it's a, this is a great big show, and I think that's, that's, a, that's a tribute to that, so. Yeah, I, I think I'd have to say the same about the SQL on Hadoop, now our SQL in Hadoop. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of vendors out there that are, <laughs> that are trying, they're scrambling, right? And yeah. the race is on to provide SQL access to, to big data. There's no question about that. And that allows us to enter the market with a solution. I mean, it, 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 that is really addressing a major need. I think the other, the other uh, figure that Merv put up in the keynote was this idea that 53% of the people doing big data projects, their next big thing that they want to do is SQL on Hadoop. Mm -hmm. And so there's a need for that market, but the market's being created because there's, there's uh, a number of people pumping into the open source side of SQL and Hadoop. Um, there's vendors like Actian who are contributing you know, the, the, you know, the best vector processing kind of technology to provide that for customers. And so uh, it's because of that need that, and the competitors that are out there that we can enter the market 
and be able to attract uh, you know very very quick attention around around this particular hole that we're filling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, one company doesn't make a market, right? No, so, uh, it, it no, and that was the way it was for quite some time. <laughs> you know, it, it was as, as a matter <laughs> of fact, but the, clearly not anymore. So, yeah, um, well, uh, you know, time for just one more question. Just you know, what are your your um, your thoughts about the show itself? Um, you know, as we mentioned, eighty eight. Uh, companies here, but I think 3,200 plus attendees from over a thousand companies. Uh, just talk about the show. And, yeah, let and me, I, I have a unique position, Jeff. I'm content chair for the show. And so, um, you know, when I took this over this year, uh, it was really important to make sure that this was a community show. Um, you know, we went out and we attracted some really great talent to, to you know, curate the tracks. Uh, we have track chairs, you know, Ron Bakken from Think Big. We got Eric Sammer, who's now at Scaling Data, used to be at Cloudera, uh, you know. Sanjay Wright, a, a hort worker. Jonathan Gay from Continuity. Um, oh man, this is going to be like remembering if you have six kids and <laughs> forget that. <laughs> uh, 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 Andy Fang from Yahoo. Mm -hmm. And then there's the six, it's the, uh, uh, anyway. John Santa Ferraro from uh, uh, yeah. Actium. Uh, yeah. But they did a great job in being very fair and saying, look at, you know, we had 600 abstracts submitted for what was going to be 126 sessions. We ended up placing, you know, a, a subset of that, of course, we have sponsors and everything. Um, great representation across the community. It, it, there's, a, there's a fair amount of Hortonworks slides and, and sessions in there, and honestly, those were chosen by the track chairs. And I think the what we're seeing is a true community event. I mean, J Jeff, I can't thank you enough for going on stage with Arun and Doug this morning, and it just shows exactly how this, this, this is a beautiful community of developers, and I think that was a great representative point in time of you know what, this, there's a lot of vendors here and there's a lot at stake and everybody's got their thing going on. There's the battle for SQL and whatever that is, John, but ultimately, you know, there's, there's a lot of developers and you know what, end of the day, they all know each other and mm -hmm. they are respectful of each other. And um, to me, I, that's why I'm, 3,200 attendees, 88 sponsors, we're over the moon delighted about the interest. Um, my personal is, is about this really being a community event. Absolutely. Yeah, I, th I think the the one thing I've seen, last time we talked, we talked about this shift that was happening from big data 1.0 to 2.0. Mm -hmm. And the major part of the shift was that companies had collected massive amounts of data, they've invested millions of dollars in, <coughs> in Hadoop and big data platforms, um, and a lot of them were stuck in the laboratory. And this move, people are, are actually getting pressure from their CFO mm -hmm. and from their CEO to now start generating value out of the data. And so I think the this idea of removing all barriers for business access to data is resonating with the crowd here. Mm. Um, because there's a number of people who have made the investments, they now want to, they want to, they, they need to move this into production and they're ready and it's going to happen. In the next six to in the next six to twelve months, I think next year when we come back, instead of 70% waiting for production, I bet it's going to be around uh, 40 or 50 percent. There's going to be a big push to get this into production. Um, big data analytics are going to become operationalized and those are the conversations that I'm having with people at this show. How to, I need to make that next step, let's go and let's do it quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think you definitely get a sense we're close to a tipping point um, with a lot of the uh, proof of concepts and experiments starting to graduate to more production, uh, production deployments and that's where we're going to see some real value creation. Uh, so it's going to be fun to watch. And, uh, we'll have you both on again next year for sure. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Thanks guys. John Santa Ferrero from Actian, Jim Walker, Hortonworks. Guys, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for watching. Stay, stay tuned. We'll be back with our next guest in just a few minutes. <laughs>